Hey, what's going on guys? Threat Level Midnight here, and today I got a comparison for you. We're going to be shooting the uh, Ruger LCP-2, and we're going to be putting it head-to-head -head against the uh, Bodyguard 380 from Smith & Wesson. Uh, they're both what I would consider micro-compact carry guns, um, both in 380, obviously. Um, there are some some kind of major differences between the two of them and I want to see which one is better um, I'm out to kind of find out a couple of things you know are, are they usable out of the box uh, are they accurate are they reliable uh, if they need upgrades what do they need and uh, you know are they a viable choice and when should you or could you carry them uh, and I think we'll find that out today uh, so let's go ahead and look at these guns up close Okay, so starting with the Bodyguard 380, you can see how I have mine here. I've had this gun for several years now, so you can see a lot of wear on it. Um, talking about out-of-the-box uh, usability, uh, right away I had to replace the trigger. The trigger that the Bodyguard includes is terrible. It's almost like you have to pull it to the frame and then some. It felt unnatural, so like for me personally, like right out of the box, it was a no-go. So this is the RTK Edge from Galloway Precision. Uh, it used to be available on their website, and now I only see the Santiago, but it has an over-travel screw. Uh, and it's also combined with the uh, the shortened uh, trigger bar, so it took about 30% of the, uh, the travel off of the trigger. Um, it's a double action only gun, so it has an internal hammer that you can't see. Uh, and then also, I didn't really care for the sights that were pressed into it, so I swapped out with some excess big dot uh, night sights. Uh, they do okay. I'm not saying that they're the best, not saying that they're the worst, but they were definitely better than what it came with. Now, is that something that you need to replace uh, right out of the box? The answer is no. Of course, you can shoot, and it shot just fine without the sights, but I'll tell you what, the trigger was something that I really thought needed to be changed right away. Um, it comes with a six-round magazine, uh, two six-round magazines, one with this little extension, and one with a flat uh, floor plate. So you can see when I have really large hands, I can very easily consume this whole gun with my hand. So right here, I get two, a two finger grip and then I'm wrapped and my second hand will come around and just close on top of it. Um, so luckily it's a 380, uh, so the recoil isn't very stout. So I can get away with having this, this two fingered grip right here. Uh, but let's take a look at the LCP2. All right, so here's a close up of the LCP2. Um, it, this is the second generation of it. Uh, you can see that the sights are fixed. There's no driving these things out. They're just milled into the slide. Um, personally, I like the way that the bodyguard feels a little bit better. Uh, these things also come with uh, six round mags, one flush floor plate and one little pinky extension, but I have to shoot it the same way with a two finger grip with that other pinky wrapped underneath. Um, the trigger, out of the box, it feels okay. Uh, it's, it's significantly better than the uh, M&P trigger out of the box, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Now, uh, I got this gun for my mother-in-law to use on her CCW, and she was uh, shooting it the other day, and she said that it was only going back into battery about 50% of the time. Uh, so right now, I'm going to try and diagnose that and see if maybe it was her grip. She said that she was kind of riding her thumb on the slide and with a small gun that could induce a malfunction. Uh, but I've also seen a lot of other people online say that, hey, it's really not going back into battery. So if that is the case, uh, then this will need upgrades right out of the box. And I happen to have an NDZ guide rod and also a Wolf Gun Springs Extra Power Spring Set, which should remedy this problem if we do encounter it. Um, so let's go ahead and get shooting and, and see if we can diagnose this one. We'll start with the LCP2. So today I'll be shooting... Um, Winchester White Box 380, it's a 95 grain full metal jacket. And uh, as you can see, it is a flat nosed bullet. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus here. It's flat nosed. Um, so maybe if the LCP is having feeding issues, this could be kind of the contributor, uh, but that's what we have today. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot. All right, so we have six in the magazine, one in the chamber. We're just gonna go ahead and just run them just into this circle and see if these sights are at least remotely accurate for a gun like this. Um, we're gonna stretch it out further today but we're just gonna start here and work our way back. So here we go. And I should mention that it does not lock back on the last round, kind of a feature that uh, the M&P has uh, that the LCP-2 
does not. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and zoom in. Uh, it shot a uh, it shot a nice tight group right here. Um, so it seems like these sights are viable and the trigger pull is uh, all right out of the box. Now, I'll tell you what, I did feel the recoil. I could feel the bottom of the grip punch into my hand and I can feel the trigger guard slap against my finger as I shoot this thing. So it's okay, uh, but I wouldn't want to be shooting it uh, all day long for a thousand rounds out of the thing, that's for sure. And now we'll go ahead and switch over to the Bodyguard 380. Um, I've shot this gun quite a bit, so I already know how it shoots, um, but we'll go ahead and, uh, and just shoot a string into that right side larger circle. So where I said the LCP doesn't uh, lock back on the last round, the Bodyguard 380 does have that feature. However, the springs inside the magazines are a little bit weak. They're a little on the weak side. So if you leave these magazines loaded for a long period of time, they really don't have the strength to pop this thing up reliably. Uh, so in theory, yes, it should lock back on the last shot, but I leave this mag loaded all the time. And even though it loads and feeds reliably, it, uh, it really doesn't have the strength to get that uh, that last round hold open. Uh, but overall, a much more pleasant gun to shoot, just first mag impressions, much more pleasant to shoot, and the group is pretty close to half the size. I think I'll uh, bring the camera closer so you guys can see. So here we have the group from the LCP. It's a little, a little over two, two and a half inches, and then we have the bodyguard 380. Uh, now the bodyguard trigger pull is substantially longer uh, but it is a lot more smooth and the gun seems to have a lot less recoil. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to the heavier recoil springs that are in the uh, LCP2 and see if that makes a difference. And so what I have to drop in here today is the NDZ Performance. Uh, it's a uh, stainless steel black nitrided guide rod and then the Wolf Precision Load Rated Conventional Recoil Springs. Now this is a three spring set here, uh, which is an extra spring compared to the, uh, the one that comes with the LCP. Uh, and I've used Wolf Springs before. It fixed a feeding issue with my Benelli M4 and I trust them. Uh, they do a good job with their springs. So I'm gonna see if this uh, makes the gun a little bit more pleasant to shoot. So I just replaced the springs in here. Um, now you could definitely feel the extra spring pressure when you're reassembling the gun, when you're getting your guide rod and your spring set on the barrel. Uh, so hopefully this makes this gun a little bit more pleasant to shoot. We'll go ahead and shoot on the same side that we started with the LCP on the left, but just the next uh, circle down. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so right away, 100% better. Uh, it took most of the snap away from the gun. I am really shocked that it did so well um, because this thing was snappy and kind of a kind of a nightmare to shoot for that first mag. Uh, I have no trigger time on LCP2s, uh, so it was really unpleasant at first, and now it feels pretty much the same recoil as the bodyguard does, which is the way it should be. Um, so I'm really happy that that worked out. And so far with the first couple mags, we've had no feeding issues um, that my mother-in-law said she was having. So it could be a grip issue, but either way with both springs, it still worked. But man, if you do have an LCP2, get those Wolf Extra Power Springs. It's really worth it. Now I just want to get into some functional, uh, functional drills here. So all I'm going to do is shoot a modified build drill. I'm going to start at five yards and just shoot a traditional build drill. Uh, but I'm going to be from like a compressed muzzle position since I don't have holsters for all these little guns uh, and keep it, to try to keep it fair. Uh, I'm gonna shoot uh, center of the target. So the white and the gray box in the target is the size of a USPSA uh, A zone. So we'll go ahead and leave that our accuracy standard, but we'll see what we can do uh, on the clock here with a micro gun and see if, if follow-ups are almost as fast, uh, if the guns are controllable enough, but let's, uh, let's get to the bottom of it. And we're starting with the Bodyguard 380.
and that's all of it. So, man, the uh, I've been at a training day all day today, so I've been shooting an M and P, and then switching to a bodyguard that's double action only. That first uh, trigger pull, and even the second one, really threw me for a loop. So you can see that first shot completely out, even of the black. Second shot here, and then shots four through six were all in within that white area, which is good. Uh, now that I expect this trigger pull. I'll go ahead and, and I'll probably shoot a better string. But let's switch to the uh, LCP and see what it can do. And, oh, I'm sorry. Overall time, 334. And we'll see uh, what our splits were. So first shot. Uh, let's see here. First shot, 0 0.98. Second shot, uh, 3984, 43, 38, 42. Um, so you can see a huge problem with the splits there on the first, uh, the first couple shots. I mean, the, the first split was like twice as slow as the rest of them. Uh, maybe we can get some more consistency out of this thing. So we're back at the five yard line. Let's go ahead and give the LCP2 a try with its uh, non-adjustable, uh, non-replaceable sights. Two four zero two four zero. Now that was a whole second faster than the bodyguard. Um, the trigger is just a lot better. So it's like the the hammer on the LCP two is pre cocked, and the bodyguard you have to pull the trigger and the hammer is breaking the entire time. So the trigger pull way better on the LCP two. I think it lends itself to faster shooting, uh, and everything was well within the little white bar, which is only about three inches wide. Um, I'm gonna give each gun another run and we'll see uh, see if I can pick it up with the bodyguard. All right, so we got the bodyguard loaded up again. Now, the only two shots that are out of that white or gray are from the bodyguard run, so we'll just keep a mental note of that. Um, and let's see if we can, one, pick the speed up and two, get our splits a little bit better. Um, you know, I didn't even look at the splits on the, on the last string. Uh, first shot, 0 0.84, 3932, 292927. So splits significantly faster with that LCP2. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what we can do with the bodyguard. All right, time 255. Um, they're all in, in the gray. I have three in the gray there. So not as tight as the, uh, not as tight or as fast as the LCP2. And I can really feel that it's, it's the long trigger pull. Uh, not that it's completely killing me, but it's harder to shoot accurate fast when you have a trigger pull that's that long. Uh, first shot broke at 86, uh, split um, 37, 34, 32, 33, and 33. So I couldn't get the splits down as far as I could with the LCP. Uh, let's give the LCP another shot and see if we, maybe we can shoot it even faster. All right, LCP's back and loaded up. Let's see what we can do. See if we can hold a tighter group than the bodyguard, which so far we have been able to. All right, looks like we shot one into the gray, which is still within our accuracy standard. And that one was uh, 218 which is pretty darn good for a little gun like this. But these shots are real tight in that, in that, white, uh, that white bar right there. And I don't know if you guys can tell how, how thin it actually is, but it's the thickness of about a 3x5 card, so it's about a 3 inches. Uh, and I know we're only shooting at 5 yards, but these are some, some really small micro-carry guns. So let's look at our splits. First shot broke at .92, split, first split 2.7, 2.6, 2.3, 2.5, and 2.5. So absolutely significantly faster than the bodyguard and even though the sights are crude uh, they're still exactly on target um, right where I wanted them so things are going pretty good for the LCP2 especially after we replace the springs because before that this thing was fairly unpleasant okay so now we're at the 15 yard line uh, and we're gonna start stretching the range on these little guns and just see how capable they are of uh, making these shots um, I'm gonna load them each with six in the mag, one in the chamber, so we'll have seven shots total. I'm gonna to start shooting the bodyguard at the large circle that's on the bottom, and then the LCP will shoot the one that's on the top. So we'll go ahead and just slow fire at 15 and uh, see how they perform.
and I can see it from here. The group uh, is rough, uh, but we'll go down and take a look. And that, uh, that long trigger pull really, really takes its toll on your wrist shooting it after a while. I've been shooting all day today. Um, but you can see here our group is pretty rough. So we have a shot here, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sorry, disregard this, this is for the first string. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So a group bigger than the palm of my hand, shooting a little bit to the right uh, of center, but we'll see how the uh, LCP does with its uh, stamp sights. I'll be shooting at the uh, larger circle on top. All right, so here we go with the LCP2 at 15 yards and uh, Lord willing, I won't shoot anything over the target. Okay. All right. So just like the uh, Smith & Wesson, a little bit of deviation, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're all there. And you can see this target's smaller than the palm, like my hand spread apart. Um, but that's not, not a great group. Now, if you're shooting uh, a human torso, that's great. That's uh, no big deal. But we're not. Uh, we're shooting a, a bullseye target. And uh, so these guns obviously do not lend themselves to supreme accuracy, which I don't think anyone believed that they did. All right, so we're back at the five yard line with the Smith & Wesson. Uh, it's loaded up five of the mag, one in the chamber. And see the, the boxes that are right next to the head of the target. We're just gonna fire two left, two right, two left, and, uh, and see what we can do for, for time here. And, and obviously accuracy. I'm gonna say it's a no-go if anything goes out of those boxes. We're so close that it shouldn't matter. But again, that's kind of what these guns are for is, is up close and getting out of there. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, so everything's in there. Um, the more I shoot the Smith & Wesson, the better it feels. It still has that really long trigger pull. Um, and the LCP trigger is just a lot more smooth just because you're reducing the travel by, you know, 75%. So let's go ahead and shoot the LCP on the same, same drill. Time was 402 on the last one. Three twenty-eight. So last run 402, this one 328, I can just, you know, uh, straight up, you can just shoot the LCP2 faster. Uh, if you put a lot of time shooting that bodyguard, you could probably pick up your speed quite a bit, but this almost feels like a striker-fired gun instead because it's a pre-cocked hammer, uh, so it feels pretty good. All right, so the next drill we're going to be firing is with, e with each gun. We're going to go ahead and on the timer, shoot two shots into the chest. Our accuracy standard is the gray and the white. And then for the Smith & Wesson, we'll fire one shot into this box on the left. And then for the LCP, we'll be firing a single shot to the box on the right. Time, 192. Let's go ahead and run that again. Time, 205. Let's see what we can do with the LCP. All right, only difference now is now I'm gonna shoot for the box on the right. One six two. One five eight. So the theme of the day is that the LCP can shoot faster and it, accuracy doesn't seem to be a problem even with uh, the sights that have been swapped out, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we saw how these guns performed at 15 yards, which wasn't great. Uh, but now I just want to know one last thing is, are, are they worth anything out at 50? So we switched to a full-size silhouette target. We're just going to see out of uh, the 6 plus 1 in the gun if we can get anything on target at 50. Um, this, we're going to start with the bodyguard. And 
let's go have a look. Okay, so things aren't uh, looking so great here at 50. So with the bodyguard, you can see the uh, target is uh, pretty much unharmed. And you have one limb shot here and two and three off the, off the chart there. And those are the only hits that are on paper. So now I know this gun is printing very low and to the right at 50. So let's see what the LCP can do. The accuracy with the bodyguard was rough. Let's see what the LCP2 can do. All right, let's see what we did here. And I tell you right now, it's a lot better than the uh, than the bodyguard is. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, and actually, that's number seven. Looks like the paper just kind of folded up at the time that shot was taken. So we have one, two, three. There's a vital hit, and then a graze to the head there, um, compared to the bodyguard, which printed down there. Now both guns are not printing in the center of the target so if you trained with uh one gun over the other you could probably find that sweet spot and kind of tune that in a little bit uh but accuracy pretty rough at 50 yards all right guys so one last thing here uh, we're gonna go ahead and shoot these things uh akimbo call of duty style guys so i'll just wrap this up on the range um it's hard to call a winner here now i have put more money into the bodyguard and it starts off more expensive um i have the excess big dot sights on there and i'm i'm not sure i'm a big fan of them i'm a kind of a three dot sight system guy so this is just kind of the lollipop design here is kind of throwing me for a loop um and the notch and blade on the lcp2 is more closely linked to a three dot you know just a notch and a, and a blade than the excess sighting system is. The trigger, uh, even though I spent money on an RTK edge trigger and Galloway short throw trigger bar, uh, LCP trigger is still better. Um, now that allows you to do different things, right? Because this trigger pull is so long that some people feel comfortable pocket carrying. I'm not a huge pocket carry guy, but the bodyguard you could definitely say is uh, more pocket carry acceptable. Where the LCP2, I would not. It's it's a fairly light trigger pull, uh, so I, I wouldn't do that. Um, both guns, accuracy-wise, shot about the same uh, with their different respective sights. We haven't had any malfunctions with either of them today, but to make them both shootable and really, you know, shootable, uh, they both needed some things right out of the box. And the bodyguard was the trigger with the the short throw trigger bar, and the LCP2 was the the extra power springs. Um, now. I didn't experience any of the things that my mother-in-law said she did with the LCP2, but I could definitely feel a huge difference when I put that new spring set in here. Uh, it made all the difference in the world as far as like shootability of the LCP2 goes. Now, I wanted, I really wanted to favor the bodyguard for this, but after shooting the LCP2 today, it just kind of performed better and you can shoot it faster. Um, accurate, like I say, accuracy wise, wasn't a huge difference, but for guns that are like dimensionally both these guns are clear, uh, dimensionally identical, you know, in length and thickness and the length of the grips. Um, you know, you kind of get more bang for your buck with the LCP than you do with the uh, Smith & Wesson bodyguard, which is unfortunate because this is the one that I own uh, and this one is my mother-in-law's. Um, and I also have more money into this. Now, that's not to say I hate the bodyguard. If that's what you have, then, then that's great. Um, now, talk about what kind of context you would carry these in uh, I live in the desert and it gets regularly into 120 degree temperatures so for me I'm not gonna be wearing pants and a belt and a full-size gun all the time so maybe 75% of the time in the summer I'm just carrying a little micro gun like this and uh, this is a gun to get away from things I'm not gonna be taking the fight to anybody with this and a little extended mag I have a little 10 shot extended mag that has a little sleeve that makes it a little bit more easy to shoot but I'm not gonna be out you know 
assaulting any villages at dawn with the bodyguard 380 and nor would i with the lcp2 uh, but what i will do is throw some gym shorts on and have a gun that's really thin and really light and really comfortable to carry and that way i always have a gun on me no matter what i'm doing whether it's just getting some gas real quick or going to the grocery store or going for a walk around the block i like to have a gun on me and if i'm going to carry anything i like it to be thin lightweight um, and still effective so in that at you know, at self-defense kind of distances, uh, it worked pretty well. At 15 yards, you could still 100% land every shot on a torso with both of these guns. Uh, so I would say at the end of the day, they both have my endorsement, but man, you know, even though everyone likes to switch things out and customize everything, the LCP2 uh, is, a, is a pretty good deal for what it is. Um, I don't know, I'll, uh, I'll post in what the uh, the price for each of them are uh, but it, it seemed to perform a little bit better it's a little bit easier to shoot especially once I switch those springs out and the springs were cheap too I think for the guide rod and the spring set it was like 26 bucks where I'm thinking the the RTK edge I don't know if you can even find these anymore uh, plus the, the whole trigger kit was probably close to a hundred dollars and then the night sights were probably close to a, at least another 75 to a hundred dollars and it really the sights weren't necessary it's kind of a luxury item but they didn't help me shoot any better so uh, for what these guns are for, I'm going to go ahead and give the edge to the LCP2, which makes me sad because, again, this one is mine. Uh, but it is what it is, and I, and I felt what I felt. So uh, hopefully this, uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe.